Okay, let's add these fractions without finding the lowest common denominator. This is so cool that uh, if you found this video and you're struggling with fractions, every time you see a fraction problem, if your expression is kind of like this, maybe you're angry about it and you're like, fractions, I don't want to deal with fractions. Maybe you're sad. Maybe your hair is kind of standing up. Well, listen, this video is going to help you out so much and uh, you're going to be like, why haven't I learned this before? Okay, so if you want this like secret way to add and subtract fractions without dealing with the lowest common denominator, we'll stick around for a couple minutes. I'm going to show you something that is pretty awesome. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I've come to the conclusion that all students can be great in mathematics, but it requires two things. One, they have to be willing to do the work. So if you're not going to work at math, then you're going to struggle in math, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is you need great math instruction, clear and understandable math instruction, and that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, I'm going to leave uh, uh, links to all my math help in the description of this video. Um, also, if you happen to be uh, preparing for a test like the GED, SAT, ACT, anything with a math section on it, um, I have a huge library of test prep courses along with homeschool courses. And if you need some math notes, you'll find links to all this information in the description of this video. All right, so let's go ahead and turn this expression into this expression. Uh, you're just going to be so happy that you uh, stuck around for a couple minutes because we're going to uh, learn how to add fractions without dealing with the lowest common denominator. All right, so let's take a look at this problem. Mostly out there, when you're adding fractions or subtracting fractions, we have to find the LCD. And I'm here to tell you, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, I don't want to make this uh, into like a really bad thing. You're going to have to know how to find the lowest common denominator. OK, you're going to have to know this. It's very, very important, not only uh, in arithmetic, but in algebra as well. But again, you can still do addition and subtraction problems with fractions without having to think about the LCD if you choose not to. OK, and you're going to want to know this method. But let's take a look uh, real quick on how we would do uh, this problem with the lowest common denominator. So real quick, when we're talking about adding fractions, let's say like one seventh plus three sevenths, I can add these fractions because the denominators are the same. Okay. So the denominators are exactly the same. This bottom number is called the denominator. So I just write that same number and then I actually just add these top numbers. Those are called the numerators. So one and three, the answer is four sevenths. So that's pretty cool. But here's the deal, right? What happens if we're adding fractions and these numbers are not the same? Well, that's a problem. Uh, so in this particular problem, two fifths plus one third, well, these numbers are not the same. Okay, so we need to make them the same. And when we want to change these denominators such that they're the same, what we're trying to do is find the lowest common denominator. So uh, real quick, the way this works, uh, and it's worth uh, reviewing this because when you see the work that we have to do here versus this little shortcut method I'm going to show you, you're going to be amazed. So the first thing we need to know is how do we find the LCD? That's a separate video. If you're interested uh, in uh, learning how to find the LCD, I have tons of videos on this on my YouTube channel. And also I teach this thoroughly in like my pre-algebra course. But uh, what we need to do here is first of all, identify that the lowest common denominator is 15. Okay, that's the lowest number that both 5 and 3 go into. So I have to change this denominator to a 15. So I'm going to multiply this number, this 5, by 3, so I can end up with a 15. Okay, i got to make this into a 15. So I multiply this number by 3. Okay, so I have to multiply the top number by 3 as well, the numerator. So 3 times 2 is 6. So this fraction, 2 fifths, is equal to or equivalent to 6 fifteenths. So uh, the cool thing about this fraction, it has my LCD, okay, that number that I need so I can actually add these fractions. So now with one third, I got to multiply that three by a five so I can end up with a 15 as a denominator. Now I can see my denominators are the same, but if I multiply the uh, denominator by a five, I got to multiply the numerator by a five. So this fraction is five times one. So this becomes five over 15. So there we go. So what we've uh, done here is uh, rewrite one third and two fifths into uh, fractions such that their denominators are 15, which is the lowest common denominator. That's why you have to find the LCD. Now, 
because these uh, have these fractions have the same denominator, we just keep that denominator just like we did up here and add the numerators, which is six and five. So six plus five is 11. So the final answer is 11 fifteenths. Okay, so that is the process that we have to uh, use when we're adding fractions and we're thinking about finding the lowest common denominator. Now, most of you out there probably can do this problem. You're like, oh, I don't know what the LCD is. I can do this. This is not that bad. Why do I need to know a way to add fractions without the LCD? Well, I'm going to show you that here in a second. But let's just remember the answer to this particular problem is 11 fifteenths. All right, so let's talk about the bow tie method. This is an awesome method. And right here, uh, when you're looking at fractions, you're thinking to yourself, okay, in your mind's eye, I'm like, all right, I have to add. So generally speaking, uh, so those students are going to be thinking about uh, the LCD. All right, oh, I'm going to have to find the LCD. But you, you're going to be th uh, thinking about the bow tie method because this is what I'm going to teach you right now. So here is the bow tie method. It looks like a bow tie, okay, something as you, uh, you would kind of wear a little bow tie. Well, I don't think too many people, <laughs> I don't think this is too stylistic these days, but you can kind of get the basic shape. And here is how it works, okay? You, it's this pattern. It's going to kind of look like a bow tie, and you follow this pattern precisely. You start from the bottom right, right there, and we're going to multiply this way, okay? So 3 times 2 is what? That is 6. Now, because this is an addition problem, we're going to put a plus. Then we're going to multiply this way. Okay, so again, you start from the bottom right and you go in this diagonal. Then your, your second step is you're going to take this 5 and you're going to multiply that way. Okay, so you can see our little bow tie kind of forming. So 5 times 1 is what? That is 5. That is our numerator. So we're going to draw a little line like that. And to get our denominator, we're going to multiply this times this, which is what? 5 times 3 is 15. We are done. 6 plus 5 is 11, or 11 over 15. I'm pretty sure that is this answer right here. Okay? And notice, I didn't do anything with LCD. I was just thinking about this bow tie situation. I'm like, ah, I'm not going to think about the LCD. That's just too much uh, brain power to use. I'm just going to go ahead and go this times this plus this times this over this times this. And bingo, I am done. Uh, and this works for subtraction as well. But remember, you have to start in this order. You start from here and to multiply by that. That's step one. And then step two is this times this. And then step three is this times this. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, really um, uh, show you why you want to know the bow tie method. By the way, this works with variables. It works with any kind of situation. And it works with... Uh, um, uh, subtraction as well. But we're just going to focus on addition. But let's go ahead and take a look at a problem like this. So for those of you out there thinking, no, I'll just stick with the LCD method. Okay. Well, let me give you this problem. Now, you might not be so happy now because you're thinking, hmm, all right, I got to do this problem. Well, look at these denominators, 175 and 54. So now you might be getting kind of angry about this. You're like, oh, yeah, I don't really want to find the LCD. This is, you know, a decent amount of work to actually go ahead and determine what the LCD is. I just want to get the answer. Okay, so this is why you want to know this bow tie method, because what we can do here is not even think about the LCD and just go ahead and uh, do this problem. Right. So instead of putting all our brain power in to try to determine the LCD. And by the way, you do need to know how to do this. You do need to know how to find the LCD. I have great videos on this on my YouTube channel. Again, I teach this thoroughly in my, my pre-algebra course. But uh, let's take a look at doing this problem real quick by just using the bow tie method. Okay, let's make our life easy. So we're like, okay, I need to get this answer. So I'm just going to follow that YouTube math man's uh, advice. I'm going to go this times this. This is the bow tie method. 54 times 5. I'll put that there. This is addition, right? So it's going to be 175 times 9. Okay. There's there. That's my numerator. So this times this plus this times this over this times this, which would be 175 times 54. So we'll set it up like that. And now I'll get my little calculator out or I can just do this by hand. 5 times 54 is 270 plus 9 times 175. That's 1575. 175 times 54, 9450. I simplify that. Here is the answer. Uh, 1845 over 9450. Now, this answer is correct. This is absolutely the correct value for this fraction. 
The only little drawback when you're using the bow tie method is uh, oftentimes, sometimes, not all the times, you may have to reduce, okay, and simplify the fraction. So uh, that's a whole other separate um, uh, uh, video. But if you don't know how to reduce a fraction, you're going to need to know how to reduce a fraction. So for example, if you have the fraction 10 over 30, you need to know that that is equal to 1 third. But it's far easier to reduce a fraction like this. Most students have a lot easier time to reduce fractions versus finding the LCD. More students find um, with a problem like this would have way more difficulty trying to figure out the LCD and rewriting these fractions. You know, we would have to first discover, okay, what's the LCD, change these particular fractions. And again, when you have numbers like this, I'm going to have to look at the prime factors. That's, a, again, a quite a bit of uh, work. Where is if uh, I told you just to reduce this fraction, you can just start, you know, uh, dividing uh, numbers into this. Uh, you can figure this out uh, without too much difficulty. Okay. So again, the bow tie method is something you definitely want to have in your math toolkit. Okay. Uh, I'm telling you right now, I've been teaching math for decades. And if you want to finally, um, you know, uh, make friends with fractions. You know, so many students don't like, I'm sure I didn't like fractions way back in the good old 1970s when I was uh, learning them. Every time you see fractions, you're like, oh, it's just so much work. Just give me the nice, easy numbers. But I'm just here to tell you that you're going to see fractions more and more and more. Arithmetic, middle school math, high school math. So guess what? You might as well make friends with them. And I'm telling you, this bow tie method is a tremendous, tremendous tool to use. Okay, so if this uh, video helped you out in some small way, go ahead and consider helping me out in a big way by liking, uh, smashing that like button and maybe even uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over 8,000 plus math videos on my channels from basic math or my channel, basic math to advanced math, my calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my content, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.